I will shalom Rastafari Salam tonight and I used to learn this is one them yard on and this is this will be a fourth part, a part four. Um speaking on the on the on, on the mystery of the cross, the real inner meaning and the allegory as we had pointed out in the first part, the allegory of the inner boundary. In other words, the cross, the mezcal, you know what I'm saying? It's it's two activities and what it discloses of our Lord and Savior, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? According to the gospel of his imperial majesty, according to the gospel of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Ketamawi HaLa Selase, Siyumek Ziavia, Negusa Neges, Ze Ethiopia. So this is expanding on the teachings of his majesty, the basic building on that, 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 that one foundation. No other foundation can be laid. Don't have any so-called Rasta, uh, brethren or sistren deceive you, whether they know it or whether they are willingly deceiving themselves. You understand the teaching of this match is very precise, it's very clear, it's very straightforward, and this is what I and I as, as, as young Rasas, young brethren and sistren and old brethren and sistren and mothers and, 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 and daughters and sisters and wives and husbands and sons and fathers, all of us have to be about, especially in, 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 in this season, in this holy season of Pesach, of Fasika, of Passover, understanding what the true meaning, right, of the cross is, you understand, as disclosed to us in the faith that was once delivered to the Kedusan, to the saints, the holy ones, and those, and those Gnostics, so-called Gnostics, Awak Iwosh, those were those who truly follow the word of Christ, who know the truth. That's what Gnosis means. It's not talking about the pseudonymous, you understand, or the ignoramuses, those who are in the ignorance, you understand, and it's through the word. The word is what cleanses us. The word is what washes us. The word is what purifies us. And that engrafted word, his word, but we have to crucify the ego. You understand? This is what a lot of folks don't even recognize. Some have been trying to walk the walk, you understand, and walking funny for a long time in, 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 the, in, the, in the walk, you understand, because they haven't recognized it's that ego. Maybe they do recognize, but how to overcome that ego. So it's through the, the, the mishtia, the mystery of the cross, when we understand the true meaning of the cross, its inner and its outer application, its application as stabilizer and as establisher, as well as its application as divider and boundary, right, and bounding off. So both in the, in the inner and the outer. So with that first Corinthians, we left off where Hawadi Apollo said, concerning the order and the meaning of Gita's uh, table, right, of the master's table, the Arad, he says, for if we would judge ourselves, if we would check ourselves, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And it's not talking about men and people on that, but it's the real judgment by, by even the dreadful judge, right? But when we are judged, it says, we are chastened of Gita of Adonia. Now, we just did a teaching on discipline, right? The, the twofold application of discipline, that discipline has a positive, John's discipline has a positive application, which is like the cross, if you look at the plus sign, and then there's a negative application, which is almost like a dividing, like a cutting, you understand? You know, and the cross, you understand, plus and the, and the minus. So there's a negative application, and the negative is correction, punishment, and reproof, but that can be summarized as chastisement and chastening. And in the, in the definition, you know, was discipline, disciple, and discipline defined that we posted for this Pesach, right? Um, we touched on that in a little more detail. So the positive side will be instruction. But it all begins with the hearing, you understand, because the true imnet, the true faith, Right, especially the subjective faith on the object of our faith on Yeshua, the Amen, it comes by hearing, right? And and the hearing has much a much deeper meaning in the Afro Shemitic than it does in the English. But even in the English, there is a reflection if we can study. If we study the word, right, the the the, the hearing also connects with our feeling. You understand? So faith comes by hearing. It's it, it's, it's it's what we. Our feelings are to be our servants, not our masters. But in this world, 
we're programmed, or the world, the Babylon system has programmed our feelings to be our masses. And this is where advertisement and the whole materialism kind of comes, you know, comes to full um, fruition of that mystery of iniquity in these last days and time. But when we are judged, we are chastened. That means we are corrected. We are even punished. But it is, it, is, it is remedial punishment. It is not penal punishment. Let's understand. It's remedial. You understand? The world is going to get penal punishment. You understand? Because the, the, the remediation is the gospel, the good news of the king of kings, of Kedemawi, Halasalachi, the conquering line, the tribe of Judah. You understand? I mean, as the, the gospel, the, 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 the gospel of the Jesus Christos, that is the true the testimony of Christ. That is the uh, remediation. But because they refuse, you understand, and they choose to do what they do, in spite of hearing the good news, they become forgetful hearers. May I and I not become forgetful hearers. But when we're judged, right, oh, you don't judge me. Oh, nobody can judge me. You see, that's that stupidness. That's that, that's that worldliness. That's that ego, she go. You understand? And how much progress are you making that really reflects you understand the true light of his majesty. Your own conscience will tell you if it hasn't been burnt out. You understand that we should not be condemned with the world. So when John chastens us, so sometimes we go through tribulation, we go through difficulty, we go through mixed up moods and attitudes. But even so, when we're chastened of Adonai, when we're chastened of Yeshua, when we're chastened because when we look at the word, and we look at our and our lives and what we've been saying in our and our mouths and what we've been feeling in our and our hearts, it doesn't match. You understand? And therefore, that explains why ones and ones and all of I and I, from whatever time to whatever time, have gone through this chastening. You understand? But then people play the blame game and to blame, you could say, the other person. You understand? To want to cast the so-called speck out of somebody else's eye, but not seeing the beam in eye in our own eyes. So I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this, but I and I also have recognized the need to also practice it. And it's why I share it because of some of the difficulties that some of the I them have been having. You understand? Um, and that we all have been having because it's a lack of knowledge. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Because what if I and I know this, then we'll do this and we'll overcome and not be condemned with the Babylonian world. Verse 33, to get to the 33rd degree. Wherefore, my brethren, and this is inclusive of the sisters, you understand this is a generic term, right? My brethren, when ye come together to eat, so when I and I come together to eat, right? Tarry one for another. You understand? In other words, we show that nobility, and it's not feigned. It's not vain, and it's not feigned. You understand? Because before we come together, we have to spend time, you know, proverbially speaking, in that closet. It says pray in that closet, that secret place, you know, spend time meditating in one's own heart in prayer, in thanks and praise. You understand? Even maybe in mourning or in fasting. You understand? But, but, but still walking his way accordingly. Mm -hmm. So verse 34 says, And if any man hunger, you know, like wanga gut, yummy, yummy, licky, licky. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. Like if anybody's rush, rushy, you know, like some feel like, well, I may not be perfect, but that next one over there is so far and we need to cut that one off. That's not your choice. And you know what? Really, it's not even my choice. you got to recognize. Now, now, you can make your choice, right? As many are called, few are chosen. You know, many are called, few are, few are chosen, right? But he says, to the ones who are called, chosen, and faithful. So where they get cut off is the faithfulness. You understand? Walking as they are admitting and admitting in him who is the Amen, who is Yeshua um, well, she is. So it says, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. It's almost like when I and I used to have like a, a ital, you know, like an ital stew or ital feast, you know, and, and this happened more often than, than not. You know, ones with yuka you that a brother in or a sister in house, and ones will come over, bring, you know, the, the, the sacrament and food and water and different things like that. You know what I mean? And some would want to eat before others, 
you understand, on that same kind of level, and it disturbs the fellowship right there. You understand? And he says, so if any man's hungry, then you should eat already at home. We're not coming to this just to eat. So the Seder is not just because I'm hungry, I need to eat. There's a spiritual eating. Your soul is hungry. You understand? Your soul must eat. But if your flesh is so strong that it's hunger, a longer gut and yummy, yummy, licky, licky, then you just go eat at home. Right? That ye come not together to condemnation. So ones have gathered many times together. Ones always say, yeah, I, and I want to do this gathering here. I'm like, just continue the teaching. Just the Torah portions. Keep studying, praying, watching and praying and praising. You know what I'm saying? Giving Isis, you know what I mean? And chanting the daily psalms and, you know, going about whatever your occupation or school or work or labor or searching or whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? But continue to grow in grace. You know what I'm saying? And one feel like, some might feel like, oh, you're trying to stop me from going out there. And it always busts. You know what I'm saying? So one's try to bring forward certain ideas of what we should be doing. This is what I and I need to be doing. If one has a business, then do the business in sincerity and in truth, because you, you reap what you sow, right? So it says, and when ye come together, you understand that we come not together to condemnation, that we don't gather in ourselves together to condemnation. We've seen already a lot of examples, and one shake their head and wonder why. Well, the, the when girl, the gospel, the good news shows us, the teaching of his majesty shows us. And this is not I and I hating a, a one or one if I, if I, if I and I have to rebuke the I. You understand? That's out of that's out of the way. You understand? That's out of the way. That's not what the master say. You're making up stuff, right? To put it politely, right? And the rest will I set in order when I come. So he's writing, as I and I is recording. You understand? As others are ministering as well to ones who are near and far. You understand? But it's a preparation. Discipleship is a preparation, my brothers and sisters, because basically you have three basic choices. Really, right? You have the Judas Iscariot choice, right? You have the John the Beloved who leaned his head on the, on, on, on the breast or the shoulder of the master, who leaned on the master's strength and not his own. That's John, also the revelator. You understand? Know and then you have Hawadi up Aethros, right? Or Simon up Aethros, right? Or Kepha, right? Kepha, who we know as, as, as Peter. Now, people say, well, what about the other disciples? The other disciples, in that sense, leading up to this Passover week, in that sense, really, on a level, are still in the audience. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about the front runners right here, the ones who are very significant, right, in the whole outworking of the mystery of God in Christ. And that is mainly Judas Iscariot, who betrayed for materiality. You know, we're saying some think that we're not talking about money enough. You know, saying that we really need to not be dealing with these teaching. Everybody know it already. You know, what I'm saying fire burn. You know, saying the fire will burn, but it's not. It's not really up to me. I, I, I would want one to repent and to hear this word and check it out for themselves and say, I will. You know, saying even if, even if they don't check for I and I on whatever other level, check for your word. You understand? And this, this shows God's grace to use a, a faulty vessel like I, but, but it is what it is. Now, let's just continue right here just to sum this up with um, going back to the allegory, right, the allegory of the inner boundary, because in the passage, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This passage... Um, in this passage, the activity of the boundary is disclosed because the interpretation is that the winnowing fork is the cross, the mescal, and the latter also consumes all the material elements and the fleshy carnal mind as fire consumes chaff and winnows, like it says in Psalm 1, which the, which, which, which the wind driveth away, which the word sound and power according to the Rastafari Turgum, drive away. And it winnows the save as a winnowing fork winnows wheat, 
So you have to look at that example there from agriculture. Moreover, Hawaii Apollos, the apostle too, they say, and I and I say, I will and I mean, he makes mention of this mescal, this cross, in the following words in 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. For the word of the mescal is folly. Us talking about the cross to some is folly, is stupidity, right? To those who are perishing, but to I and I who are being saved, it is the hail of God. It is the hail of Haile Selassie the first, right? Now, it concludes over here. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.